Hello there and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to start Unit 2 of AP Psychology. In this video we'll be covering Unit 2, Topic 1, Interaction of Heredity and Environment. Now before we get started, I want to do a quick plug about the Mr. Sin Discord server. If you're looking for a place to study with thousands of students around the world, well come join the server. We have channels for each of the units of AP Psychology and have an amazing community that can help support you in your studies. It's free and you can find a link for the server in the description of this video. Alright, now you might be asking yourself, well, what in the world does this topic even mean? Interaction of heredity and environment? Well, heredity is the passing on of different physical and mental traits from one generation to another. So when we're talking about heredity, we're talking actually about genetics, characteristics and traits of people and animals they're born with. Environment, on the other hand, is talking about where that species was raised, what resources were available, and how they were treated. Today, many people argue that it is nature, our genetics and biology and heredity that shapes us as individuals, while others say actually nurture our environment and how our parents raised us, what peers we had, the amount of education and wealth that we had at our disposal. That's what shapes us as individuals. If we go back to our Unit 1 Topic 1 video, we can see that Charles Darwin would actually be a proponent of nature over nurture. Charles Darwin was not a psychologist. In fact, his book, The Origin of Species, was published well before the first psychology lab was created by William Vunt. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, if Charles Darwin is not a psychologist, then why are we talking about it? Well, we talk about about Darwin in psychology because of the contributions he made in the area of heredity and environment. Charles Darwin was one of the creators of the theory of evolution, which states that evolution happens by natural selection. In psychology, this theory became the foundation for the evolutionary approach. Another topic from our Unit 1, Topic 1 video. Essentially, Darwin believed that humans and animals would pass on specific traits that helped them survive. Traits that did not help the species survive would die off. If we go back to the different psychological perspectives that we talked about again from our Unit 1, Topic 1 video, we can see where they stand on the spectrum of this debate. One of the ways in which we could try and determine the amount of influence from our nature or nurture is by looking at heritability. What this is is a mathematical measure to estimate the amount of variations there is in a population related to the genes. Notice here though I said population. These estimates only apply to the population, not individual people. For example, if the heritability for a trait is 0.7, that means 70% of the variations for that trait in a population is caused by genetics and 30% is due to the environment. Heritabilities can range anywhere from 0 to 1. So we could actually see that traits can be influenced by both nature and nurture. Later in Unit 7, we'll learn about reciprocal determinism, which connects back to this conversation. Reciprocal determinism proposes another way to think about the environment. Instead of thinking of it as a one-way street where the environment impacts a person, reciprocal determinism believes that the environment, behavior, and an individual's feelings and beliefs can actually influence and impact each other. Notice the diagram in each of the different factors that impact one another. Personal factors influence behaviors and behaviors impact personal factors. When looking at how heredity and also the environment interact, we can see that when it comes to the development of people and animals, well, both sides have influence on the outcome. In fact, there's an entire field of study known as epigenetics that focuses on these interactions. Epigenetics is the study of how the environment and a person's behavior affect a person's genes and also how they work. Notice I said how your genes work. This study looks at how your body reads a DNA sequence. The DNA itself is not changing whatsoever. The changes that are happening are not permanent and can be changed back. Epigenetics happens slowly. Your genes are essentially being turned on or off due to sustained environmental pressure. This is not something that happens because of one situation. It has to be sustained pressure. One concept students get confused with when we're talking about epigenetics is plasticity. Plasticity is when the brain changes or builds new neural pathways in response to that person's experiences. We'll talk more about plasticity in our Unit 2 Topic 8 video. Now, over the years, many studies have been done to try and determine the answer to the nature versus nurture debate. From studies on identical twins to children who are adopted, but at the end of the day, we can see that it is both nature and nurture that impact our development. All right, now you know the time has come to practice what we've learned. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section below. Also, if you're finding value in these videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and drop a like on the video. It's free, it helps support the channel and it lets me know that you want more psychology content. And if you need a little bit of extra help with AP Psychology, well check out some of the links in the description of this video for some extra resources. I'm Mr. Sin, thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you online.